Hello and welcome to our Cooler tutorial video for Nikon's NIS Elements. In this tutorial we will use a PE800 to explain how to install and configure compatible illumination systems and set up an experiment. But you can follow the steps for other supported CoolLED products too. For more information please take a look at the summary sheet which is available on our website. If you head to support imaging software, third party imaging software and find NIS elements from the table and select the summary. Here you can see the list of compatible products and you can also see for the PE800 whether you need a patch for an older version of NIS. A few extra steps need completing before we launch NIS. Firstly, you may need to install the PE driver if you have not done so previously. In this example, we don't need to because we are using a PE800 with Windows 10. But to find out whether you need the driver and how to download and install this file, then please also see our accompanying video on the website. Again, it's on the imaging software page, but instead of going to the third party imaging software, go to the CoolEd PE driver section. This gives you overview information and another tutorial video to follow. The next step is either to download NIS elements or to modify the installation to add your illumination system. We already have NIS elements installed here, so we need to modify the installation. To do this, go to Add or Remove Programs in Windows, find NIS in the list, and select this. Instead of uninstalling, we need to modify. Ensure that Modify is selected here and click Next. These settings are as they previously were on the original installation, so we maintain these. We're not making any changes to the camera, so we click Next. We're not making any changes to the modules either, so we'll click Next. When you come to Devices, you need to scroll down, find CoolEd, and then select the CoolEd illumination systems that you require. We already have the CoolEd PE800 selected, but you can also add other illumination systems, such as the PE4000. Click Next. And then finally, click Finish. And you are now ready to run NIS Elements. Once the light source is switched on and connected to the PC via USB, it's time to start NIS. Select the configuration that you wish to add the illumination system to and click OK. Once NIS is loaded, the first thing you need to do is add the illumination system so to do this, head to Devices and Device Manager. Then we need to select the illumination system from Devices. So we'll click here. And the CoolEd P800 is in the list, so we'll click this. Select Add Device. At this point, what it's worth doing is just double checking that the COM port is correct. So here we have COM port 6, we'll cross-reference this with the Windows Device Manager. In the device list here we can see ports, and the USB serial device, which is the PE800 in our case, this shows COM6. So this is correct because it matches up with what we see in NIS, but if this isn't correct then you can use the drop-down 
here to change this. So we're happy with this setting, so we'll click Connect. And you can see here on the graphical representation of your setup, the P800 is connected. If you do want to look at advanced configuration options for the PE800, you can right click, select configure. For example, if you're using TTL control, uh, um, such as using the NIDAC board, this is where you can set it up. But in this example, we're just using USB connectivity. So we're happy with this, so we'll click OK. Then we just need to make sure that the camera simulator which we're using in this example is set to the epi port. We're happy with this setup so we'll close the device manager. There are many features you can configure in NIS but one that it's just worth mentioning in relation to the light source is adding optical filters. When you add a new light source, we highly recommend matching your optical filters and you can add these in NIS elements, either on the acquisition window here or you can go to devices, filters and shutters. Click this icon to add a new filter configuration. Select the three dots here to assign your filter. In this case, we'll just select DAPI because it's an example, but you can select your specific filters. If you scroll down, you can see other filter manufacturers here. Once you've selected your filter, click Set, and you can do this for multiple positions. Once you're finished, click Close and OK. And you'll see that your filters appear here. The illumination system is controlled using the PE pad, which is automatically loaded in the acquisition window here. If this does not show up, you can go to Customize, Acquisition Controls, and select the PE800 pad. An icon now appears in the toolbar for ease of access later on. If you simply want to observe your sample, all you need to do is select the required LED you can see here it's highlighted blue and then drag this across to set the intensity or you can type in here and set an intensity percentage value press enter and then select live and you'll see your LED illuminate in live mode you can continue to control the LEDs in real time you can change the intensity or you can select different LEDs. When it comes to controlling the PE4000, which has multiple LEDs per channel, use the PE4000 pad in the same way, to select the LED and to control the intensity. However, if you do need to select a different LED within an individual channel, then you need to click configure and select a different LED from the list here and then select OK. If you wish to run an experiment you will need to first set up some optical configurations. In this example I'm setting up a DAPI channel so the first thing I need to do is select the relevant LEDs from the P800 pad. So I'm selecting the 365 nanometer LED and I'll set the intensity. Then it's time to set up an optical configuration. You can either do this by clicking add in the acquisition window or you can go to calibration and select new optical configuration. I change the name to DAPI. And because we're using a manual microscope setup, we'll change this to manually. 
and you can also customise the emission and also the colour tag. The important thing to ensure in this window is that you set the active shutter to your cool LED illumination system. In this case, we have the PE800 selected already. And then you can see the LEDs that we set up previously in the PE800 pad appear here. We're happy with these settings, so we'll click Finish. Now we can see that a DAPI optical configuration appears in the acquisition window and also in the toolbar up here. And when we go into live mode and we can select DAPI, this illuminates the relevant LED settings. There are two things to note about optical configurations. Firstly, if your optical configuration is selected and then you change the settings, for example, we'll increase the intensity, an exclamation mark appears here. If you right click this, you have a few options. For example, you can update the current setting, so the optical configuration will have an increased intensity, or you can revert to your saved settings. The second thing to note is that you're not just limited to one LED per optical configuration. You can select however many LEDs are available to you. For example, we can select a few and we can have them at different intensities as well. And this can be created as an optical configuration. If you wish to run a multi-channel experiment, you'll need to add a few more optical configurations and we'll do this in the same way that we created the one for the DAPI channel. So here we'll create um, a channel for GFP. So we'll select the relevant LED for 70 nanometers. We'll set the intensity and then we'll click add to add an optical configuration. Change the name to GFP. We'll select this manually. We'll change the colour tag to green. We've ensured that the active shutter is set to the PE800. You can see that the LED settings here have changed. Now we'll click finish and you can see that DAPI and GFP now appear in the toolbar in the acquisition window. We're now ready to run an experiment. To do this, click on ND Acquire. This opens the ND Acquisition Wizard. We want to do a time lapse and a multi channel, so we'll select these. You can rename your experiment or you can change where you want the images saved to. The next tab is where you set your time lapse parameters. Click the blue cross to add a new time sequence. You can rename the protocol if you wish. Then add the delay using the drop down. And we're happy with this, so we'll move on to the next tab where we set up the multi channel parameters. We'll add our optical configurations by clicking the blue cross once more. Click it once, add the DAPI channel it twice and it adds the GFP channel but these can also be changed you just click the three dots here and you can even set up a new optical configuration if you wish. Once you're happy with all of the settings in the ND acquisition wizard then click run. Ordinarily, this is where you would see your sample, but we're using a simulation camera for this experiment, so um, we're, we're just seeing the simulation image. And then once you've finished your experiment, you can close NIS Elements. And then the next time you start it up, all of your settings will automatically reload. And here you can see that your DAPI and GFP optical configurations are visible in the toolbar. 
and also in the acquisition window. I hope this has given you enough information to get started with CoolEd Illumination Systems in NIS Elements, but please do get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you for watching this CoolEd tutorial video. Thank you.